Russell, you are going to be producing and actually seeing revenue in the new year. Did I hear you correctly? That's correct. So when we embarked on this pathway, we said we only want to be involved with Brownfields companies or Brownfields mines that can be produced within 12 months. So we've been working on this now for the last six months or so, preparing our mine, the Malula mine, a copper cobalt past producing mine uh, for production. So watch this space. We will meet our goals. Speaking of watching this segment, I think I noticed a news release about the king of mining buying shares in your company. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yes. So if you Google king of mining and put nobody's name behind it, out pops up uh, Ian Hannum. Ian Hannum was the global chairman for metals and mining at J.P. Morgan Kazanov. But what the market hasn't actually appreciated is, is his 2IC at J.P. Morgan Kazanov is a gentleman named Lloyd Pengilly, who's on our board of advisors and, in fact, is... His official label is uh, advisor to the CEO, which is me. So we've been the only company since 2012 that's been able to put the successful team at J.P. Morgan Kazanov in the global metals and mining space back together under one umbrella. And it's exciting. And so yesterday, Ian Hannum filed that he owned 7.47%. I would say to the market, watch the space in that sector. And in that regard, um, you'll start to see uh, increased shareholders uh, and TR, TR1 uh, notifications here um, in the near future. Of course, we at Investor Intel have been watching a pattern of more and more exceptionally wealthy individuals investing in exploration companies in the critical mineral sector. And perhaps that's your business model. I noticed at our investor talk, everybody was taking notes when you were explaining your your model and how you're proceeding. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Sure. So, as a past fund manager in the commodity space, I went back and I looked at all my losing trades. And where did I lose the most money? And I lost the most money on, on exploration stories, where there are green fields and every year you had to pass the hat around in order to keep the lights on and pay salaries and, and the rent and such. So we have three boxes that we tick in terms of critical metals criteria. One, uh, we want to have any acquisition cash flow within 12 months. So that means 12 months of production and 12 months uh, we will be in production, we will be producing cash flow, which allows us to not have to dilute shareholders. Number two, we want to pay no more than one times EBITDA for any of our transactions. And number three, all of our transactions must be polymetallic in, in nature. So in this particular case of Malulu in the Congo, it's a copper cobalt mine. And so as we expand throughout the region, it might be tantalum tin, it might be tin tungsten, it might be tantalum niobium and such. But if we stick to those three boxes, it keeps us on the and the focus pathway marching forward uh, while looking after shareholders uh, and making sure that we don't dilute them while generating lots of free cash. You talked repeatedly about protecting your shareholders, which was quite frankly music to my ears. Can you tell us uh, what we should be looking forward to in the next quarter or two? So in Q4 2022, Look for uh, some updates in a week or so on Malulu and the mining equipment that's there. Um, look for some updates on production. And we will announce uh, when the drill result uh, drill campaign begins. We will announce our first sales of ore and our first receipt of capital. And uh, the jerk report, which I think will be highly shareholder value accretive. A jerk report tells the market that, yes, everything that we've said in terms of where we believe is in situ is actually there and can grow. So we have a phase one drill program that we wish to start this year. Um, and based on that and the successful rate of, of uh, drilling the cobalt anomaly, uh, we'll start with a phase two uh, drill program sometime in H1 2023. Of course, Russell, every time we reach out to you, you're always in Africa or traveling. Um, can you please stay in contact with us more often? And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. For those of you wanting more information, please go to the following website to find out more about Critical Metals PLC, which is trading on the London Stock Exchange, CRTM. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Tracy.